of course, losses are not something you had to deal with very often. So just talk to us right now about just kind of the emotion as, as you kind of let everything process. Um, no, losses are part of life, and losses is something I deal with occasionally. Just this is my first one in MMA, but yeah, as they say, it is what it is. Um, if I was going to lose to anyone, you know, what, you know, what better guy to lose to than a guy like Jan, a classy champion, um, a cool dude, a very nice guy, a guy who has a great story in himself, you know, uh, on his way of getting cut from the company, comes back and then dominates, you know, becomes a light heavyweight champion and then hands this guy, a future legend, his first loss. Yeah, if I was going to lose to anyone, I'm glad I lost to him. Yeah. Ended up being a pretty tactical battle on the feet. I mean, can you talk about, I guess, kind of what your game plan was and, and, and how it played out versus what you thought you were going to see tonight? Um, that was my game plan pretty much. Um, just draw out some of his attacks, but he, he took his time tonight. He didn't, I think he respected me as well. Like I did respect him. I respected his power. I felt his power. And yeah, you know, I can handle that Polish thing. Um, yeah, that was the game plan pretty much. He didn't, he didn't rush as much as I thought because he respected me, which is, you know, rightfully so. But um, also he respected the fact that I got up from his uh, takedowns early on. It wasn't until the last round, I credit him for this, he timed it well. And then I, I'll have to have a look at the tape and see where my mind was at. But he just timed it well with that takedown. And then I had a good lockdown. I was trying to, I was trying to get the deep half um, when I had the lockdown, but also he wouldn't make space to punch. He did the whole pitter patter thing because he was just going to steal the round because he knew like if he gave me space, I'm slippery, man. <laughs> I'm slippery and I was going to get back up. So credit to him. He's a great champion. The later rounds, as you said, were kind of clear in scoring with the takedowns. I think some of the earlier rounds, maybe not as much. I mean, what did you guys, I mean, you ended up only getting one round, uh, the third. Um, what did you guys think about the scoring as, as it was playing out? Yeah, it wasn't that, that you know, big of a difference. I don't know about those 10-8 rounds, and I don't know about those, um, some of those scorecards from, some, from the judges. But, yeah, I lost the fight to the better fighter tonight, um, the craftier fighter tonight. And, yeah, but it wasn't like an ass whooping or anything. Like, when he had me on the ground, you know, if he had postured up and then wailed on me and thrown some crazy elbows and crazy punches and connected crazy, yeah, I can I can say yeah. Give it a ten eight. Give it a ten seven. Even use the whole ten point must system. But it wasn't under that. He just held on and just you know snuck some shots in to try and keep it busy enough that the referee doesn't stand it up. And that's a veteran move because he's a veteran in this game. Yeah. yeah, I know you want to let this thing soak in, but I mean, any at this moment, any regrets? I mean, obviously you, you took a big chance here, right? I mean, you rolled the dice and it didn't pay off. Any regrets? No regrets. No regrets. Um, like I said, this is like, I don't know. I feel like boxing or the boxing module or model has um, made it a bad thing to lose, which is, yeah, sucks losing. Don't get me wrong. But it's not like the end of the world. Like I said, I've lost before in the past. And like, you know, one of my, my friend, VDK, rest in peace. I've lost many times, but I remain undefeated. You know, it's about this. Like right now, me and my team, we're just excited to get back home and work on certain little details because I was drawing them out. He was, par he was trying to parry my jab and I had an opening for my change up, my change up. And yeah, he had good defense. He had an answer for a lot of things that I was, I was throwing at him. Well, as well, I caught him a few times. I didn't hurt him, but he didn't hurt me either. But yeah, it is what it is. Nice. Last thing for me, I know you want to kind of go back to the drawing board, but do you see a career path for yourself right now? I mean, is it, hey, let's just go dominate 185 and show what we can do. Do you still say, hey, I want to still entertain, maybe a move back to 205 at some point? I mean, what's, what's the plan? Oh, definitely. You'll see me back at 205 later in the future. But right now, I go to the division, I go to dominate. And I know they're going to be thinking, oh, that's it. You just got to take them down. And then that shit, you got them. I'm like, all right, cool, bet. But I'll remind them again why I'm the king at 185. Izzy, to your right. Uh, What's up, Kev? How much do you think his size was a factor, like that you weren't able to hurt him with any of the counters that you threw or anything? Do you think that the, his size helped him a, a take some of the shots? No, I wouldn't say the size, because I can't hurt big dudes. I think it was just his defense. He was really tight with his defense and smart with his defense. And also, like I said, he was not as careless with his offense like he usually is. You see him in the past where he was just like, kind of 
march one two one two throwing like these weird angle punches but he didn't i was ready for those i was even trying to draw them out certain times i'd shake and bake and you know invite him to like lunch but he didn't so yeah he he played it safe he knew he had to respect my game and so did i i respected his game but his size didn't really make that much of a factor until the last round when my legs just got fatigued but my lungs were still fine I know you uh, pay a lot of attention to <coughs> excuse me, what goes on. Do you feel like from what you've seen, this was the best he's ever fought in the UFC? Uh, uh, I, haven't, I have to watch the fight again to see what it looked like. What it felt like was different. I, it didn't, I wouldn't say it was the best he's ever fought from what I saw, but I have to watch the fight. But I don't think so. I don't think so. It was a lot closer than the judges were trying to make it out to be, you know? And obviously the whole thing about you trying to make history was uh, it pe got people interested in the fight. Mm -hmm. You also had the feud with John, right? The personal thing, and I know you wanted to fight John. Now that John is a heavyweight and you've been in there with a light heavyweight, is that out of the picture now or do you still feel like in a couple months or whatever years you could uh, fight John? A a never say life? never, never say never. But right now, like I said, I'm going back down to 185 and getting my work done. But yeah, fuck that nigga anyway. It's all good. So busy. When you look at how you played the tactics of the 205 pound debut in the UFC, do you, when you do move up again, will you still see, keep the same strategy of not putting on any extra weight and trying to keep yourself faster? Yeah, I'll have to think about that. My team and I will have to think about that. But right now, yeah, I, I, honestly, I could have won this fight. This is not like a, you know, blah, 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 blah. But tonight, he played a better game plan and he was the better fighter tonight. That's it. Like, he respected me, and I respected him. And we had a great, I guess, a great showing of ourselves. But, yeah, I'm not, like, you know, heartbroken. I hate losing, don't get me wrong, but I'm not like, oh, my God, fuck, he really embarrassed me. Like, that was it. Like, I'm fucking, yeah, nah. I felt like I had a great showing for myself. I represented my team very well. But now we, we go back to the drawing board, and it's kind of fun. Like, I look forward to, like, this is the dip in my story, you know what I mean? This is the bit where, you know, the valley, if you will. And then I rise up again, like the phoenix that I am. There was a moment in the third round, I think, where he tried like a jumping knee, and huh. we've had a little exchange and a laugh. Were you guys talking to each other or just sort of acknowledging? Uh, I can't remember what I said, but I kind of giggled because I was like, huh. <laughs> it was, yeah, like nice try. But um, yeah, I, the guy's a good fighter, and he felt me, like I felt his, I took his best punches, and. You know, everyone was like, when you get touched by this guy, you go to sleep. I'm awake. Um, he grabbed me double underhooks and took me down. I got back up when he gave me space. Um, and there was another one where I, 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 I think I stuffed it or I broke his grip. And then he tried, he kneed me in the face on the way up and I was right on him again. And I could hear him breathing heavy and I knew like, right. But he just had his defense really tight for this fight. He wasn't as careless as I was expecting because I was expecting a careless yawn. Um, and I thought, I would draw out some, some, some mistakes from which I did, but then he was able to fix those mistakes on the fly. So, man, credit to the guy and his team. They, they put on one hell of a game plan and they got their guy ready for me. Last thing for me, were you surprised? Because I know going into this, you were expecting his left body kick. Yeah. And were you surprised that he didn't really throw that and that he... He did, but and, not as much. Right, yeah. yeah. And he, check, he seemed to check your, I think your right kick to, the, to his shit. You like, seemed to check it. Yeah, over, but over. the inside leg kick when our southpaw was hitting him. And I was liking that and I was going back to it. But then he started checking it, but I still went back to it. And when I faked it, he was biting. He was biting on a lot of the things I was throwing. But... Like I said, I just have to watch the fight again and then have my, what do you call it, my, my um, infamous you know, post-fight shower so I can just like dissect everything and get away from all the noise and really see what was going on. Because there was cer certain, I was so lucid, I was so calm, you know, I, was, I could hear everything, I could feel everything. And it was just like, it was one of those things where I just, I felt like I was in the moment, but yeah, it just wasn't my moment tonight. Uh, is he right here? Uh, I'm so. curious. I know you said you have to go watch the fight again, but uh, in the fight, did you think the fight was a, 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 a two-two going into the final round? I didn't even know it was the final, the fourth. I, I was like, when I heard it was the fourth round, I was like, oh shit! I thought it was the third. Like I was just having fun in there. Like I was so lucid, and I can. I felt myself. I was smirking a little bit. I was smiling at certain things when I knew I had him, and yeah, there was certain. I didn't really, score. I wasn't scoring the fight, 
I was just like trying to score points. I wasn't trying to knock him out, take him out. You know, but I was trying to score points and just touch him. Like I said, just keep touching him. Because trust me, I can drop these guys. I've done it before, and I'll do it again. But I can drop these guys. And um, yeah, I wasn't scoring it, so I didn't really know what it was. But I'm telling you, some of those judges, uh, I mean, <laughs> they at least need to train. There, need, there needs to be some kind of criteria before you start judging MMA and not just get some guys from boxing, like, oh, have a look at this MMA fight and judge. At least you need to get, get down with the business. And you, and you mentioned the scoring. Would you prefer to know the score going into rounds? So, like, if you didn't know it was the fifth round, all of a sudden you do, and you see maybe you're down. I should have known. I, I think I should have known it was the fifth round, but I wasn't, like, like I'm not playing this game like that, like, you know, pitter patter. My, 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 my gang, they let me know, like, okay, this is the fifth round. I kind of heard someone mention it, like, to the ref, and I was like, oh, shit, we are in the fifth round. But I knew it was the fourth round because I heard someone mention that as well. But, um... I don't know. That's a good question. I th uh, that might be a good thing. That might be a good thing. And Invicta does it a few times. They show. Oh them fuck it! Yeah, then let them. Let, let, yeah, let them know. This is round four. This is round three. Or maybe even scores like during the round, so you know if you're behind or not. I think. Wait, do, does Invicta let you know if you're behind? They they show your the corner, and then it's up to the corner if they want to tell you what the score is. That's smart. Let's do that then. Fuck it. Why don't we do it? That seems really smart. I like the fact that we have instant replays now. I don't know why that took so long as well. I'm sure they have a group chat that they can all just text each other, NSCA, you know. I think that's a really smart idea. So, yeah, get it done. So that way, if my corner wants to tell me, like, yo, we need this round, I can, because I saw him getting tired. He would trust me. I was fresh. He was getting tired. And the size played a, f a factor in the fifth round. And you had a couple teammates on this card. I know Carlos came up short, but he got the 50,000 bonus in a, in a kind of fun fight, and then Kai got the big spectacular win. So what did you make of their performances? I was inspired by both of them, um, by Carlos, because of the way he showed himself in the first round. But it's one of these things that you just have to experience it. You know, you just have to get in the game, um, get the feel for it. He got into the second round, I think, for the first time in a long time, but in the UFC, really feel the fatigue. And, um, yeah, his opponent was game, was a... Bro, that guy is tough. I, don't, I mean, he is Nigerian, but <laughs> yeah, like he is tough. And it was just like, I, there was a point he looked at Herb Dean and goes, I'm okay. And I'm thinking like, he's eating shots to the body and to the face. And he's, he's looking like, what's his name? Derek Lewis would say, he's okay. <laughs> but yeah, uh, credit to him. And Kai, perseverance, man. I don't know what it was, but there was a bit where homeboy pulling the back down and then tried to sink the choke in, and Kai just fought like hell with the top hand, and it was like this never say die attitude. And I think it's that dad strength, man. Like that, you know, he's the new papa as well. That's that's literally what he said. Yeah, Kobe, I could see it. And also, Eugene had an interview earlier on at the gym when we had a presser, and he talked about what they work with Kai um, when it comes to like, you know, if the fight's not going your way, and he put that on full display tonight. Like, his perseverance was inspiring. And the fact that he even told me in the hotel, he's just like, he could feel him getting tired. And he just he saw he thought to himself, just get up. Just get up. It's like, all right, bet. Got up and just fucked them up. This row right here. Um, I want to know a lot of yourself. You know, you're a very confident guy. You've always portrayed that. Still am. You're undefeated. I mean, I want to know, you seem to be taking this really well. How much have you ever thought about what your first loss, if you ever experienced it, would be like? I've, like I told you guys, I've lost in kickboxing. I've lost in boxing. I've lost in life. I've lost in love. I've lost in family. Like, life is, you know, you don't just win all the time. It's wins and losses. So you just, you roll with the punches, pun. But, you know, it's, it's, it is what it is. I didn't really, I don't think about these things. Like, this was an option. In another parallel universe, I'm the double champ, and it all went, you know, the way I expected it to. But in this one, I didn't come, I came up short tonight. But, you know, I'm still here. When I go home, my team is still there. They love me. They don't, nothing changes. You know, my family, my loved ones, they, they, I just called all of them, the ones that I give a fuck about, and they all love me. When I go home and I see Toothless and Millie, they're gonna see me and lick me and they'll still love me. So that's all that matters. And at the end of the day, I leave here with a few mil, and I'm happy about that. You said expect the unexpected with the walkout. You really did that. That was probably the most chill vibe. Uh, how far in advance did you know that's how you wanted to come out for this one? Um, well, that track one time in um, <clears throat> one time in, in lockdown before the Costa fight, me and the boys went bike riding, and we, um, you know, with a f few fun guys, and uh, yeah, we were vibing. And I had that track in my head 
on repeat while I was vibing, while I was on a trip, and it was beautiful. And that, tra that track just puts me in this frequency where I just felt calm and at ease and in the mm -hmm. moment. And I picked the track maybe two days ago, and I was like, yeah, that's the track I want to vibe with. And it was perfect, I felt that. And even his track was quite stoic as well and very airy, and I like that vibe. But um, yeah, it is what it is. I, I mean, my entrances are for me only. They're not really for anyone else. I could sell my entrances to some artists because people always offer me like, oh, I'll give you this much if you walk out to my song. I'm sure I could do that, but it's not really for anyone else but myself. The trip home, are we gonna two week quarantine again? Yeah. Are we gonna get internet easy or do you already have other plans how you wanna kill some time? We'll figure it out. Well, I mean, I'm, I'm getting into Twitch now. I've got a green screen, um, got a whole Alienware set up. And I, I think by the time I get home, I've got this 34 inch or 38 inch curved monitor right. alongside with the one that my brother already, shout out to my brother David as well. He set this whole thing up. And yeah, I, I look forward to just like, getting into that esports world a little bit. But um, Internet Izzy, hey man, if you wanna talk that shit, guess what, I'll clap back, and I clap hard. Thank you. Easy. Hey Izzy, you've already beaten three of the four guys I'm about to mention, but who's most deserving to face you for the middleweight strap between the winners of Till and Vittori and Costa and Whitaker? I've already stated I would like to fight Till if he can get it done. Um, but, who's the most deserving we'll have to wait and see um show me something and i know they all think oh that's it we've seen the chink in his armor now but i'll tell you one thing every time in my life that i've lost in in, in combat sports i come back and i fuck the next guy up i knock them out actually because guess what my team and i we go back and do the work and we know what to work on you see kai tonight you see what happened i'm telling you like we this is this is what we do even eugene was telling me like i'm excited to go back and and to the drawing board so we know what to work on. I'm excited as well because I'm like, fuck, I thought I'd be able to like handle his, his top game better. But like I said, he, he knew, because after I got up from the first one, he knew if he gave me space, what would happen? I'd, I'd slip away. Um, I even like had his chin at one point. I thought, should I go for a guillotine? I was like, nah, slip it. I'll, I'll let that one go. But yeah, I'm excited to go back home and work again on myself. What did the Polish power feel like compared to the middleweights, the 20 pound difference between the two? I know what people mean, I know what they mean, like that. It's like this, that thud, but uh, there was this, this, this kickboxer, I don't want to say the name, but like he met me in China one time and he's like, I know you, I saw you fight in Turkey, man, you got a great chin. And that's what he remembered about me and I was like, oh, yuck. Like, I don't want to be remembered for being a tough guy. Like I said, I like to hit and don't get hit. So I'm, I mean, I'm not worried about getting hit. I just don't like to get hit because I like to do the hitting. But um, yeah, uh, wait, repeat the question. I rambled there for a little bit. I don't even remember. A oh, fuck it, Shmo. <laughs> How did the 20 pounds feel? The, oh, the weight, well, yeah, the, it just felt that, that thud. That's, it's just like a thud, but I didn't get rocked. I didn't get flashed. I didn't, I mean, everyone said, oh, the Polish power, legendary Polish power. If you get touched by it, you're gonna sleep. Nah. But, you know, I'm still awake. And then the last question. You want to be known as the greatest of all time MMA history. That's, that's the goal. That's the journey. Where does this loss, where does this moment stack up along the way? When you reflect, how are you going to remember this? Like I said, I, I, tonight I lost to a great champion, a guy, a, a deserving guy as well. I'm, I'm happy for him because in his story, like I said, he was, I think, two to four in the UFC on his way to getting cut, comes back, and... Fuck, I gotta go find someone in the woods who's hanging and get their rope or something. <laughs> Do some crazy juju. I'm Nigerian, so you know, I can go back home and get some juju as well. But um, yeah, he, he, went, he went on a chair and did his thing, became champion. And then he's the guy to hand me my first loss in MMA. That's a great story for him. So I'm happy for him, like actually. And I don't know if that's believable, but I don't really give a fuck. I actually feel happy for him. And it's not one of these ones where it's like, I gotta get that back. Like, I need to get that back. Like, if I never fight him again, so be it. Like, he's a great champion. If I was, even Eugene said, if we're gonna lose to anyone, it would be that guy. Like, um, it's, 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 it's a pleasure to share the cage with a, a cool guy like that. You know, in this game with a lot of douchebags and a lot of, I don't wanna say what I wanna say, but yeah, like, it, it's, it's a pleasure to share a cage with someone like that. And like I said, he even, you can ask him, he was tired, I was fresh. So he used his crafty veteran you know, moves to, to, to take me down in that last round. And then he did what he did. He, he scored 
and secure the round. So credit to him. Israel, back here to your right. Uh, very important question. What kind of pizza were you eating yesterday morning at weigh-ins? Um, well, it was a pepperoni one, but then later on, we had like five or six six pizzas in 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 the room, even bigger ones like New York size pizzas, and we had different flavors. So I had like six giant slices or four giant slices last night. Yeah, and that's why I lost the not jokes. <laughs> I'm joking. With, with a bottle of wine too, I imagine. Nah, no wine, it's just lines. <laughs> <laughs> I joke, I joke. How much did you actually uh, weigh in the cage today, do you know? Uh, with all this on, I took this jacket off, but um, I was 201 pounds, point six or some shit. But I'm sure I was probably around 200 or 199, maybe, if you strip me down. And uh, last thing for me, what was it like fighting in the Apex? I mean, you fought in Fight Island, obviously you've, you fought in front of full, full uh, houses before, but what was it like fighting here? It was cool. I mean, this whole smaller cage thing, does it, you, did you see me get trapped? Did you see me get you know, held against the fence for long? I'm pretty sure when I was against the fence, I was able to get off within 30 seconds. Um, yeah, this whole smaller cage thing is, is a myth to me. For the rest of everyone else, sure, it makes a difference, but for me it's a myth because my footwork is still great and yeah. I can, I, can, I can hack the system. What about just the, vi the vibe in there? Like when the you're vibe, fighting? Uh, compared to the, the Abu Dhabi, Fire Island, the vibe, nah, I was pretty present. I could, I, could, I don't know, it was just, felt like a, a death match being streamed to the rest of the world. Yeah, like some, some crazy shit. That's what Fire Island felt like as well, like some <laughs> private island with some illegal fight to the death and is being streamed to the rest of the world underground. I like that shit. I love this life. <laughs> Thanks, man. Easy. Uh, Izzy, um, you said you're going to go back down to middleweight, but it sounds like you still have aspirations for light heavyweight. Possibly heavyweight. Or heavyweight? All right. What do you take from this for when you do come back? What would you change? Um, what would I change? Mm, that's a good question. I'll have to give you an honest answer another time, if I'm being honest, because I don't want to speak, you know, I guess out of turn. It's still fresh. I haven't had my shower yet to really digest a lot of this. But what do I take from this? I mean, like I said, dare to be great, you know? I'm still alive. I didn't really get outclassed, you know? It was just, wasn't my night because the other guy was, you know, better tonight. And I can, like, I'm telling you, in another timeline, I beat this guy. Another timeline, he beats me in a different way. Like, there's so many, so many different ways this could have ended up. But tonight, in this timeline, he was the better fighter tonight. So, yeah, I just have to really sit with it and sit with my team. Then we can decide exactly what, what we'll do next time. Because this is the game. This is what we do. We, we go back, reassess, adjust, and try again. And one last thing, uh, moving up that much weight, did your body feel any different? Like, was, you're able to perform just as well yeah, as... I felt great. There's no excuses on my part. I felt great. I felt calm in the back, airily calm. Um, the nerves, I was dealing with it well. I channeled it well so I can use it to my own advantage. Um, yeah, it's just in the cage. I just have to watch the fight again to see what mistakes were made on my part and what mistakes I didn't capitalize on because I was making them make mistakes shit that I would have normally caught other people with, somehow his defense was tighter than I expected. And also he came with a good game plan. So I just have to watch the tape and yeah, we'll reassess and see what we do. All right. Is that it? Cool. Thanks you guys. And also wait, one more thing. Everyone who supports me, all my people, I appreciate you. I'm sorry I didn't, I didn't, like, I know the, the fact that I like to, I like to make my fans, I like to make my fans be proud. You know, when they say what I'm going to do, what I've already said, being champ champ or double champ or whatever. So I, I, I'm sorry I let you down, but, you know, if you want to hop off the hype train, bro, get the fuck off the hype train. We're just stopping for a little gas. Understand? You can get the fuck off. But if you want to stick with me, stick with me. And I'm, I'll, trust me, I'll show you a good time. It's going to be a fun ride, all right? And I appreciate y'all. Mwah.